All right, next up we have uh, Rafael Zarecki. Um, he will be presenting optimal routing um, versus route reflector VNF. Reconcile the fire with water. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to be here. It's my third Nanoc and feel at home. Uh, yeah, still good morning, especially for those from the West Coast. It's a time to start work. So let's start. Um, I will talk today uh, on that session about some implication of, uh, and of use the virtual root reflector, especially in the context of the uh, routing optimality. So we start with um, as, like a definition why we are doing VNF, why we are virtualized network function, which is the root reflection function. What are the benefits we are looking after? And then we examine, I will, I will go through the challenges with the root reflector implementation in the traditional environment and how we address it today, typically. And then uh, try to reconcile these two things and see how, the, how, we, uh, how we achieve the current optimality or current behavior while benefiting from the network virtu function virtualization. So the root reflection is a function, right? We, we tend to think about root reflector as a device, as a node, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a function we need in the network and we can instantiate it as a um, virtual instance, as a software running in the virtual environment. And the natural place for the uh, virtual machine is a data center. And data center is where it is. It's not where we want to, be, uh, to have a data center from the root reflector perspective. Uh, it's, where it's where it is. So we have to live with that. And that's a very important point for my talk because this is what we will fight against. The at the same time, for while we virtualize the uh, root reflector, where we move it to the uh, virtual environment, we want to ensure that uh, it behaves in a way, uh, from the routing perspective, in a way we expect from root reflector. So it selects the optimal path, not worse than it's today. And we don't want to uh, have more problems with this session scaling or path scaling. That's a, second or, a secondary order issue, but just keep in mind. Very, very traditional approach is to use the router, whatever the router is, um, use, it, use them to, uh, make a, to, to run a root reflector on top of, the, on, on top of this uh, platform. But the point is, the router by design is optimized to do packet forwarding. Otherwise, it's not a router. Not for the data storage or processing. Or that's, that's overhead. That's a cost of doing business for, the, for this kind of uh, device. However, the root reflection function is, is critical. It's very important. It takes a lot of resources, but not the forwarding resources. We have a servers at, at the other end, right? We have, uh, which, is, which are designed for compute data. And it would be good to use it, because, and especially that if we co consider efficiency, like cost of pro processing the prefix or cost of keeping the rib, it's much lower on the x86 server platform. And that's even lower if we consider the virtual machines located in the de data center environment. We can easier, uh, and VMs bring other values as well. Right? We can easier scale it up, we can easier migrate from one, one VM to another, etc. So, because root reflector by his nature, it's a cost of doing business, right? Nobody is pay, no of your customer is paying for better or worse root reflector. You need it to run your network, but you need it efficient, powerful, but at the same time, it, the optimization point for root reflector is always to find the cheapest way of doing things. That's why we virtual function, virtualization of the root reflector to virtual environment to the VMs is, seems to be attractive. Okay, 
how the root reflectors works in the sorry for that works in the traditional network. Right, we tend to uh, very, in very traditional approach, the root reflector function is either ported or running on on path on the kind of aggregation or core router, or uh, on the another router which is off the path. And due to optimization, path optimization, the slightly bigger network try to distribute the reflection on a re regional basis in order to promote regional uh, local exit, re regionally local exit from the network. Some, again, some traditional approach is to use the retired router, which is not able to keep with the traffic we need to switch, to move them out of the data path and use them as a root reflector platform. But that's, it doesn't actually help much because it's old router, so it's already dated CPU, limited memory. That's, that's short, short time optimization. So the first optimization for the uh, uh, root reflector platform would be change the platform. Right? Move from the router hardware, whatever, MX, Juniper, Cisco, whatever it is, to the, um, to the server, to the to, to compute node, to appliance. And that's absolutely possible. Uh, especially n nowadays when uh, all vendors provide the software version of, the, of, of, the, of, the, of the router, either Juniper, Cisco, Alcatel, everybody, do, Viata, everybody is doing that. Uh, but this move, this change, it, it's not end of the story, right? There is a couple of things we are not gaining from that. We still need the interfaces to connect the server to the router to the network. We still need to maintain this platform, right? It's a physical platform somewhere in the network, so we have to go there, we have to upgrade it, we have to uh, ma maintain it. Even worse, this is... Um, this requires new skills to manage the, uh, the platform. It's not a router, it's a server. It has some operating system. It has to be patched, etc. cetera. It's a sysadmin skills, which not every network operator, staff, person, possess. And of course, the last but not least, the, 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 the cycle, the technology cycle in the server world is shorter. So, very so the, the end of life, the, the re hardware replacement cycle in the server is shorter than in the router. It's good because you always have the best of the bread and faster platform, but at the same time you have to manage upgrades and moving the, moving the software from one platform to another. The other dimension of the possible optimization of root, root, infra, in, in, root, root reflection infrastructure is just centralized, limit the number of root reflectors. And that's not a new idea. And in context of virtual function or virtualization of root reflector, it's appealing, right? Because, hey, let's move all uh, root reflectors to the data center, one or maybe two for redundancy. But then, Simple centralization to one node expose some challenges. It's quite possible to do for VPNs, and many providers are doing this for VPN families, but it's not that popular for internet, even in the past. And there are two fundamental issues with the very centralized, let's say, single root reflector for, for whatever size of the network. It's a scaling challenge for session and for path, and we will examine it in a minute. And the other, even more important, is suboptimal routing as effect of that. So first, to look closer to the session scaling problem, right? We ha the network are bigger and bigger. And they are, have the bigger capacity, but it also has more and more nodes. So if we go extreme and say, oh, what, hey, one root reflector will serve all my edge routers, then we can end up with the thousands of sessions. And that's a pressure on memory, not big deal nowadays but also on the CPU and on the communication path. We have to send the same information the, uh, many times over the uh, links which are next to the, uh, next to the root reflector, especially the root reflector uplink. So to, that's 
why in today's network, especially inter, uh, internet root reflection infra infrastructure is kind of distributed or regionalized. Uh, because it mitigates the problem. The you can look, uh, you can see on the on the right side that the number of session is more linear, more piece when we distribute the uh, distribute this, uh, the the, system, uh, the root reflector system, uh, reflection system, and there is no black magic here. Very similar is the path scaling, right? Um, the interesting observation is that from VPN perspective, it's not, again, it's not that big deal because the, uh, for given VPN, the single prefix are multi homet but if we say multi homet it's usually two. However, in the internet context, the big ISP has a multiple session on, across the network, in many places on the network, but end of the day, there is a tens of peers when they get the full table. Especially, that's especially for the, 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 the for the, that's a case for the one who provides the transit service, and this is a pressure again on the CPU. We have more path. There is a higher risk of the chain. There are always path going in and out, withdraw, run outs, and even they are not the best path. Software has to realize that this is something going, something going on. And again, the regionalization of root reflectors. So having the root reflectors in the, more lo in the local scope, um, it's a kind of higher, and building the hierarchy uh, solves the problem. It's exactly the same math behind the, that and the, and the session scaling. And then finally, the routing optimality problem. The root reflector, as a, it follows BGP. So if we keep the uh, add path aside, we will come back to this in a moment. In principle, BGP root reflector selects the one best path per prefix, uh, and it's best from a root reflector's point of view, considering root reflector's position in the network, IGP view, topology, etc. It selects the one and advertises this to all and every of his client. So the root reflector client is not aware about alternative paths. It just knows the one given by root reflector and they have to follow it. And this is not necessarily the best exit from the root reflector, uh, from the client perspective. It's just the best exit from the refle uh, reflector. In L3 VPNs or L2 VPNs, VPLS, this problem is somehow, somehow solved by use of the PU, of the, by use of root distinguisher part of address um, which is based on, to, uh, based on the uh, originator loopback address. This creates the unique prefix per, uh, uh, unique prefix from the root reflector point of view, and of course, if the, every prefix is unique, there is nothing to, n nothing to select. A every prefix is the best one. However, for internet, it doesn't happen, there is no distinguisher. Instead, we have AdPath. But AdPath is not really good for, um, for optimiza routing optimization. It's, it's a nice tool to provide the alternative path for the fast restoration or faster restoration of the traffic. Uh, but in order to be able to, uh, to say, hey, it's optimal routing, we have to add all path. If we add all path, then we have, a, again, the scaling problem. And it's very, uh, it, 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 the scaling grows very fast uh, with the root reflection and, uh, and add path together. We can limit the size of the add path. Let's say add path second best path. But then the, nobody says the second best path would be the optimal from, the, from root reflector perspective, uh, from the client perspective. So again, the traditional answer to this problem is go regional root reflectors. That mitigates the problem. Of course, root reflector still selects the uh, best exit from his point of view. It's not uh, globally the most optimal one per every single client. It's a semi-optimal, but that's good enough. That's what we are doing today. That's a, a current status quo, and I'm not trying to um, 
exceed that. I just try, I'm just trying to match the current status quo of the optimality with the benefits of the virtual uh, visualization of the root reflection function. So again, we are going back to the goals. We want to have the root reflector working in the virtual environment in, the, in, the, in data center, whenever data center is located. And there is an important assumption I did during the preparation for this talk, that the data center infrastructure may have L3 elements, which doesn't participate in the one network routing, IGP, BGP, whatever. Did mean that we have to somehow bypass this or overcome this problem uh, to enable the root reflector to choose the best exit. And a small recap, in the BGP path selection process, we are the, the, in the middle of selection, we have very important step. And this step is that the, it says that the best path would be the one which has the lowest IGP cost to the next hop, right? And from now on, this will be the, this would be the step against which we will do the, our design and to, against which we will, I will try to explain how to play with that to achieve opti, semi-optimal, regional, regionally optimal routing. We start from the, uh, we go through the example and we start with the traditional network design. There is a, a country, whatever it is, not my home country. Uh, and in this country, we have four regions. We have uh, uh, two root reflector per, uh, per region for internet, another two root reflector per region for the, for the VPNs. So all together it's 16. They are spread across the country, located in the network sites. It, this root reflector may or may not be uh, uh, may or not or may be collocated with the core, uh, core routers or even implemented as a function on top of the core router. Doesn't matter. Uh, the important thing is that the data center are on the west and east, where the real estate is cheap. The power is cheap, space is cheap, uh, labor is cheap, but. It's not necessarily the most optimal place for the, uh, for the root reflector. So our goal is to move the functions, move the root reflection function from the network toward into the data center. And not necessarily consolidate root reflector, just have them where the compute resources are cheap. And for the geo redundancy reason, in our, at this picture, you see that there is a east and west, uh, and west data center. So the, from each region, one of the internet root reflector goes to the west data center, another to the east data center. However, we have to address the problem of uh, lack of layer free connectivity, or actually lack of IGP connectivity to the root reflector. And we want to keep the, we want to keep the south region or north region to select the local exit point in the region as a best BGP path. So the proposal or the approach to do that is Yes, we, we have the virtual root reflector, it runs the BGP as usual, it has the same set of clients as the root reflector in a before scenario. So the, let's say, south, south region clients are peering with a given root reflector instance. But there is all, this, this root reflector instance has also the so-called so shadow routing context. It's nothing else than the uh, additional RIB, routing information base, which in some way, keep the, I, uh, uh, keep the topology and metrics information from the south region or north region, designated region point of view. I will use the south as example when, during this explanation because that's what the picture is showing. Uh, <clears throat> so this visual, visualized root reflector supposed to perform the BGP path selection based on the information in, not in the main RIB, 
but in the other rib. So we will go through the uh, three elements of that. First is this uh, uh, shadow instance, right? We have to populate them with the uh, topology information, with the metrics, and we will, and we will, do, and it's done through the using the Jiri tunnel, right? So we open the Jiri tunnel, which is uh, which payload is terminated in this uh, routing instance, and we will run the IGP on top of it. Uh, so this way we will, be, uh, we will build the, the, the proper rib. The, uh, the another end of the tunnel is uh, somewhere deep in the network. In uh, this example, it's uh, one of the core router in the uh, south region. From, BG, uh, from IGP perspective, there is a couple of policies. We, never, we don't want the, uh, this shadow instance to be uh, on the shortest path for anything. So set the overload bit or uh, bump the uh, link metrics for the tunnel. Do not insert the, any root learned in the shadow instance into the forwarding table because there is no need. The only purpose of this instance is to have a Routing information, uh, routing information base, use it for the BGP next of resolution. And we not need anything else than loopbacks, right? The other end of the tunnel, I call this router shadow host, but you can call it whatever. Uh, we not, uh, we, I, I tr I, we not need anything special here. Okay, G tunnel, that's one thing. But accept of that, we run basic BG, uh, IGP on top of it, run BFD maybe if we, no, we, if we need, bump the uh, metrics, and potentially, uh, for the security reason, we want to avoid the transit traffic entering this, this tunnel. Last part is a global instance of the visual. Uh, so in the global instance, we have BGP running. And the global instance has a couple of the uh, function. First of all, the global instance is the one which has the routing toward the network. And because our assumption that uh, we don't know what is the data center infrastructure, we cannot assume that IGP will go there. So static is good enough. It could be default, it could be aggregate toward loopbacks. We can use VRRP or if the data center provides or use BFD. Uh, and this forwarding information, this, this static route, uh, are used for two purposes. First of all, we use it to forward BGP packets from the BGP process down to the, down to the uh, router, all clients in the, uh, in the designated region for that instance. And also we use that forwarding instances to forward, uh, to forward the encapsulated to no packet. Not the payload, but after encapsulation to forward to the, to the shadow host. That's important and I will tell you why in the two slides forward. This was about forwarding. The BGP, which runs in this context, it learns the prefixes over the session from clients or from other root reflectors. That's a normal thing. But the next hop resolution so this defining what is the metric toward the next hop is happening in the shadow context, not in the default context. This allows us to uh, abstract the position of the uh, virtual, vi virtual root reflector or virtual network function from the actual physical location of data center and let them be having as it is in the south or north or whatever region we want. There are a couple of uh, aspects which has to be considered. Resiliency. Yeah, maybe it's a good idea to have G two GRE tunnels and have two shadow rotors. And uh, that's nothing special if we use the traditional approach with the uh, router on, uh, root reflector on the stick. You, you also connect them usually to two core rotors and the selection of these two core rotors are same, right? It's something which is uh, in the region and has equally, best equally, or very similar uh, cost to all clients. 
So it doesn't change the design, uh, uh, design approach we used since last, I don't know, 10 years. It's just we use the tunnel instead of physical interface. Uh, we have to avoid a, uh, for some of you who has ex experience with the GRE or tunneling, well, generally running routing protocol over the tunnel, it's a call for problem. That should be a, like a bell because it may re result in recursion, right? So we learn the destination of the tunnel through the tunnel, uh, through the IGP running inside the tunnel. So the tunnel will flop and the IGP session will flop because the, and then our next hop resolution will be, uh, uh, next hop, BGP next hop will, will be invalid, BGP redraws and the, it's a circle of the disaster. We don't want that and the, using the separate instances, that's why we, I use the separate instances, solves the problem. Yes, it could happen for this or other reason that the tunnel destination will be learned over IGP but this information will be in the context, not use it for forwarding of the GRE tunnel packet, so it doesn't hurt. Another security concern with these kind of things is, hey, I want to be sure that there is no traffic passing through my uh, VNF. Virtual machines and the compute nodes are good for the BGP, but that's not the best core router ever. I would say the West ever. Uh, so we, uh, at the same time, the shadow instance is a part of IGP. They have two adjacency over two tunnels. Uh, so it's a part of the network, part of IGP. We have to prevent the uh, uh, passing traffic through. So yes, we can do this on the control plane, put the high metrics on the tunnel, set the overall bit if we can, if it's ISIS, that's good, but that's not guaranteed that there, will be no, there would be no transit traffic. So the guarantee could be achieved through the filters and, not, and the filters applied on the shadow host, so on the ingress of the tunnel in the network, on the network side. Some vendor implementation may make it easier than other, but in generally, that's, that's the general solution. We need a filter which allows only, uh, only IGP traffic and maybe BFD. And the concept could be extended. We may have no more than one shadow instance, right? If we can instruct BGP to use some uh, context rip for, uh, or other context, uh, other instance rip to resolve the next hop, we can say, hey, but we have the RIP1 for the internet, RIP2 for the VPLS, RIP3 for L3 VPNs, and yet another RIB for the next resolution for the uh, MBGP, so URP, uh, the RPF routes for, for multicast. Why not? And each of these instances may have different tunnels, different point of, uh, remote, uh, remote points of the tunnel, and because of that, different topology view. We can even create different regi regions for the internet, different for the VPN, different for the multicast. It's quite flexible. So, in summary, instantiate root reflector as a virtual function could provide optimal routing, optimal to the level it's optimal today, regardless of the physical location of the root reflector. And it's like evolutionary solution toward optimal root reflectors, uh, optimal root reflectors uh, feature set, which is a, a little bit a side of my talk. Uh, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not going to talk about this this time. Uh, next up resolution and path selection based on that could be different for the address family. That's possible, that's doable depending on your policy, uh, uh, it, it could be controlled by policy. And protecting the virtual network function of root reflector against unwanted, unwanted transit traffic has to be considered. It's, it's very important because otherwise we can screw up our, uh, we can uh, overload the software running on the VM with the transit traffic instead of spare, uh, dedicated these resources for the 
dealing with the BGP updates. That's what I have. Thank you very much. Any questions? There is a mic. Hi, and uh, we, we got one question. And on the VRR, is LDP supported? Is what? LDP, Label Distribution Protocol supported. Ah, okay. We have some like inter ES option C applications and uh, which the route reflector, the inter, like uh, how do I say, the route reflector for inter ES option C, the RDP is required to go to the other side. And uh, we heard like uh, RDP is not let, official. Let me answer that way. Uh, I, I think I, I understand the question. So mm -hmm. uh, in sake of time, uh, first is um, the support of particular protocol on the virtual route reflector except BGP uh, is, a, is a vendor specific answer. So I can answer from my company, but let's better do uh, uh, off, uh, offline. Okay. Um, but usually you need the label at root if you want to resolve label at prefix, BGP prefixes. And again, it's a, a vendor dependent or software dependent, but there is nothing uh, which stops you from the standard perspective to punch, uh, to put the, put the IGP prefixes you learn in the context into the, uh, into the label at read and let the, it's, it's a fooling of the root reflector, right? But you can do that. And we, yeah. it, you're not losing anything. You still have the, you still the trace, the reachability of the next hop. Exactly. And uh, for that. the reachability val validation, and we can use RIP group and to make it work. And so far, it's uh, for the inter ES option C, he need to go to the other route reflector and uh, to pass the label and to go through the ESBR to go to the other side is a label switched pass and which required RDP. And the physical RR can do that. And so far, the VRR and the function is there, but I heard like RDP is going to be removed from support from the VRR, and which I can force, I think, like uh, for the inter ES Again, that's a very vendor specific question. I can answer it, uh, but uh, we can go off. Are, but I think it's not the place. Yeah, that's, that, I was asked to be not vendor specific. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. Randy, right. I think Randy is. Yeah. Sorry, Randy, we're going to have to close the mic, so we're running behind and we need to continue. So thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thanks.